Welcome back, everyone. I hope you had an excellent break and that your 2021 is off to an excellent start. Uh, I wanted to start by sharing with you guys a video we made over the break for the uh, first annual Jackson Dragons 4th and 5th grade Rocket Championship. So what happened was uh, the 4th and 5th graders made rockets that were fueled by isopropyl alcohol, which is another word for rubbing alcohol, which is the, the sort of alcohol that is in hand sanitizer. So if you've used that, or um, if you have a cut or a scrape or a boo-boo on you, and uh, they put that liquid that's clear, but it has a really strong smell and it stings, that's what it is. It's rubbing alcohol. It burns, but it doesn't burn really hot. So it makes an explosion that is powerful enough to propel the rocket, but not dangerous enough where anyone can get hurt. So it's a great kind of rocket fuel for fourth and fifth graders to be using. Um, but since uh, you know no one can come to school, we, I launched the Rockets Forum and I did that over break. And I've got a fun little video I want to share with you guys that shows um, all the rockets we launched and uh, shows which ones came in which places. Um, overall, the winner was a fourth grader and her rocket flew really far. And then the second place was a fifth grader and it was both girls who did it. So I was really excited to see that. And the rockets were really neat. Everyone did a great job uh, building the rockets. So let's take a look at the video and let's see how they did. Here's mine. That's Miss Davenport's. That one didn't go very far. And some of the names are from students, uh, like this one was named by a student, it was called Door. And uh, some of them I had to come up with a name because I didn't have a, a name when they carried them in. person's name so hopefully when I find out who who it was I'll uh, put their name on here but um, it actually flew pretty well and if you look all the rockets are just drink bottles so this one um, I think was an iced tea but it some of them were water some of them were soda um, but it's just a drink bottle a plastic drink bottle and then the kids added different features onto it that they thought would help it fly. And this one's really simple. It's just a piece of paper that they turned into a cone and put on the end of the rocket and then some little paper fins. It flies really well though. These rockets didn't make uh, you know, first, second, or third place, but they did really well. I like that one. That was cute. This one I had a hard time, I think, because the, the 
wires were touching, so it wasn't launching very well, or it wasn't igniting. this one though if you notice it's a little bit bigger than any of the other rockets and that's because it's a two and a half liter bottle which I'd never launched before um, it did pretty well but what we were most impressed with was uh, the blast from when it launched and you, you can see in the video there there's the orange wires coming out of the bottom of the video and that's where I'm standing. So I'm not very far from these when they launch. And when I push the igniter, I could feel the blast hit me right in the chest. It also made a really loud sound, but I was really impressed with how hard I could feel the blast hitting me in the chest. So um, you can see it, it doesn't fly super far, but the explosion is pretty impressive. This one we picked, all of us, uh, because my family helped me launch all the video or all the the rockets, and uh, my parents were there, and my brother, and then uh, my uh, kids were there too, and we all really liked the detail that the uh, rocket designer put into the Pom Pom 2000. So even though you can see, you know, even where it landed, it didn't. Uh, fly the furthest but it was neat looking so we really like that so she got uh she's gonna get a special award for that so these are the first through third place for both fourth and fifth grade champion is called she rock and that was second place for the whole school and then razzle dazzle was the overall champion and even though the nose cone flew off it was a winner so if you didn't get a chance to build a rocket and turn it in this time um, I think later in the year, I would really like to do it again um, so that the people who either didn't get a chance or couldn't make a rocket this time around, they would get a chance to do it. And then also for the ones who did make a rocket, they can make changes and improve on their rocket because that's all part of the uh, design process. All right. So we just saw the rockets getting launched. So what I would like to do is we're going to review 
kind of some of the things that we talked about for the whole beginning part of the year and then what we're going to be talking about for the next probably couple months because it's a pretty cool topic and there's a lot of information to be shared about that um but one kind of common theme that we've had in everything that we've talked about so we've talked about plants we've talked about the water cycle and we've talked about the seasons now all three of those things have one big thing in common and that happens to be the sun because we have the plants that need photosynthesis that comes from the energy of the sun we have the water cycle which gets started when the sun heats up and evaporates the water and then we have the seasons which are all caused by the earth's orbit around the sun so obviously the sun is a pretty important feature in our solar system and in our daily lives and for our planet so i would really like to just to touch on those and then we're going to talk about our solar system which obviously is kind of governed by the sun because of the, it's the largest object in our whole uh, solar system so the role of the sun so the sun is important on earth and in our solar system so the first thing that we started the year off was talking about plants and without the sun there wouldn't be any plants and that's because plants need the sun to conduct photosynthesis and we've seen this picture a bunch we've got uh, the sunlight coming down and then the plants use that sunlight to make energy and with that energy they can produce oxygen and then they make all the great things that we love from our plants and one of those things is here we've got our tomato plant and it makes tomatoes so the sunlight comes in and it hits the chloroplasts so that's what makes the plants green and these chloroplasts when they get sunlight and carbon dioxide they're able to make energy so sun is very important for plant life the next is the water cycle so the water cycle is what keeps water flowing on earth water never disappears it just moves into a different state so we have liquid water and then we have water vapor that goes up into the air and makes clouds and when those clouds get big enough they get filled with water then the, that water falls down in the form of precipitation so that is the water cycle we have evaporation we have condensation precipitation and then collection and all those things are necessary or are, are made possible by the sun and again it all starts with evaporation and evaporation is what gets the whole water cycle moving and that is driven 100 percent by the sun and now finally we have our seasons now the seasons are caused by earth's orbit around the sun and that's what we just all celebrated a few days ago was earth completing yet another orbit around the sun and that's what we call a year and as the earth goes around the sun the angle that the sun hits us changes so if we look at this picture here in this picture the earth or the our part of the earth which is north america is tilted away from the sun so you can see it's leaning away and that means the sunlight isn't hitting us directly and that's winter so that's where we're at right now and if we keep moving in our orbit we get eventually to here where we're not tilted away or toward the sun the sun's just kind of hitting us in a neutral way and that is spring because first we have winter then spring 
And if we remember our seasons, we come around to this phase of our orbit, and now we're tilted towards the sun. So the sun is hitting us more directly. The sun's right over our heads in the at lunchtime. And that is the summer. So that's when it gets nice and hot here. Then we move back around to the season we just finished up, which is fall. So again, just like spring over here, we're not tilted towards it. We're not tilted away from the sun. It's a kind of a neutral, or like a mid-level. But all of this is governed by Earth's orbit around the sun. If we just stayed in one spot, then we wouldn't have any seasons. But because we're going around the sun, our seasons change. So our solar system, and our solar system is what we call our group of planets. And we can kind of divide our planets into three different groups. So there are 13 major things that orbit the sun. Eventually, we're going to find more because we keep finding more stuff. But right now, we're settled at 13. And four of them are what we call the terrestrial planets. Those are the planets that are closer to the sun. And they're usually very rocky, or they are very rocky. And then further away from the sun are what we call the gas giants or the Jovian planets and there are four of those so we have eight planets total and then there are five other planets that we call dwarf planets and pluto is the largest but we also have ceres eris and then three kind of newer ones that we've just discovered and uh, we'll talk about them a little bit but we don't know much about those uh, because they are small and they're very, very, very far away from us. I like this model because it's nice and colorful. And it looks like something we could make. But this is our solar system here. So we have the sun, which is huge. This is not very good at representing that. The sun is gigantic. It makes up over 99% of all the stuff in our solar system. So if we got rid of the sun, there would only be less than 1% of our solar system left. So if we look at this model here, it starts with Mercury is closest, then Venus, then Earth, Mars, and then we move out to here to Jupiter, which is the largest planet in our solar system, then to Saturn, Uranus, and then Neptune. So those are the ones out there. And in between here, if you notice, between Jupiter and Mars, there's a big gap. And this is what we call the asteroid belt. And there's just some, really a very small amount of rocks kind of floating around in this area and that's where we find one of the dwarf planets called Ceres. So the sun, like I said, the sun is huge. It is the biggest thing in our solar system by a large margin. It is 840,000 miles across, which is huge. The earth is only 8,000 miles across and it's about 330 time, 330,000 times as massive as the Earth. So you would need 330,000 Earths to weigh as much as one sun. So the sun is very big. And here it is. Sometimes it's described as being a big ball of fire. And I think for our class, that is a good way to think about it. The sun is a big ball of fire. And um, it's what generates all the heat that gets to Earth. It generates all the light that gets to Earth. So thank goodness that it's a big ball of fire. 
but it's not anything you want to get very close to. So thankfully, we are 93 million miles away. So the closest planet to the sun is called Mercury, and it is an airless, rocky, barren planet. We still don't know very much about it, but we'll talk more about Mercury later. But it orbits around the sun very quickly. And it's not much bigger than our own moon. Next after that is Venus. And we've got two pictures here because if you were flying in your spaceship past Venus, you would see the image on the left. And Venus is covered in a thick, thick, very thick atmosphere that we can't see through and so on the right hand image there that is uh, an image where we've used special technology to look down through the atmosphere and see what the surface of venus looks like and venus is not anywhere you would want to go even though it's not the closest planet to the sun it is hotter than mercury it's hot enough to melt lead which is a metal and you definitely would not want to spend any time on Venus. So the next planet out from the sun is Earth. And this is a great picture because this is obviously a real picture. And it was taken by the astronauts uh, of Apollo 17, which was a mission to go land on the moon. And they took this as they were coming back to Earth. And you can see in this picture, you can see Africa and Madagascar and the Arabian Peninsula right here. And you can see all of the clouds and storms and the beautiful ocean. Earth is very unique and we are lucky to have it. Mars is the next one out. Mars is um, cold. It has a very thin atmosphere, but it does we think have some water somewhere on it um, and it has the largest mountains and canyons in the whole solar system and it's somewhere that we think we could send people and that maybe we could learn how to live on it uh, we couldn't live on it without spacesuits and and, and uh, special places to live you, know, you couldn't build a regular house on mars because there's not enough air to breathe and it's very cold so the next object is not a planet at all. It's a dwarf planet. It's called Ceres, and it's in the asteroid belt. So it's in between Mars and Jupiter. And this is a very good picture we've gotten of it. And they think that there's water on Ceres, not like oceans or lakes that you can swim in, but frozen ice. And they are very interested to check it out. And you can see it, it isn't perfectly circular. Um, it's a little egg shaped. So all the other planets that we've seen are fairly circular. This one is pretty far from being circular. Now the largest planet in the solar system is Jupiter. And Jupiter is very different from any of the other planets we've seen so far because Jupiter, we don't think, Jupiter does not have a solid surface. So if you went to Jupiter, there would be nothing to land on. So Jupiter is a gigantic ball of gas. So we call it a gas giant. There's no solid surface to stand on. And it is huge. Now you can see in this picture here, there's a storm here called the Great Red Spot. And that is about three Earths across. So that gives you an idea of how huge Jupiter is. It's mostly made up of hydrogen and helium. There's a lot of other chemicals in its atmosphere too, but none of it is anything humans can breathe or hang her out around very long. Um, it's all poisonous gas. Saturn, you definitely have seen pictures of Saturn because Saturn has these beautiful rings around it. And the rings are made up of very fine or small pieces of ice and rock. And they think um, there was a moon that was orbiting Saturn at some point, 
and eventually the moon disintegrated or fell into small pieces but it wasn't close enough to saturn where it would fall in it stayed in orbit so they don't know how they formed but they are pretty amazing but just like jupiter saturn is made out of gases so there isn't a solid surface on saturn for us to land on but fortunately both jupiter and saturn have a lot of moons and we're very interested in those moons because they have some very interesting features about them the next planet is uranus and uranus especially in this picture looks very boring because it's just kind of a hazy blue disc but uranus is weird because it turns on its side so most planets we think of as spinning like a top uranus rolls like a ball as it goes around the sun we do not know very much about uranus uh, we've taken some pictures from a distance but we've never sent anything very close to it so it's a bit of a mystery but it is very cold and it's one of the furthest planets out from the sun the next furthest is neptune neptune is a lot like uranus it's made of ammonia and methane but you can see it does have some storms they've seen them um a little bit like uh, jupiter does but again very 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 cold very far from the sun so the sun looks kind of like our full moon if you were near the surface of neptune and you look back towards the sun you wouldn't see a bright glowing disc like we do you would see something that's similar to the light that we would get from a full moon so Pluto, when I was your age, Pluto was the ninth planet, the furthest thing out there. And it still is where it was, but they don't call it a planet anymore, uh, partly because it's too small, also because it doesn't orbit the sun uh, the same way the other planets do, and also because Pluto um, has moons, but they orbit each other instead of being orbited by its moon. So that's one of the reasons why it's been downgraded to a dwarf planet but pluto is the king of the dwarf planet so it is the largest of the dwarf planets and here we have two pictures the one on the right is was our best picture that we had up until just late last year in 2020 we got pictures from up close so we sent a probe way out to pluto and it's the fastest thing that humans have ever made and it was called the new horizons probe and it took some really really cool pictures of pluto and pluto is red we did not know that anytime i saw someone make a picture of pluto when it wasn't this blurry one on the right hand side they always made it blue and cold it's still cold but it's red and we didn't know that and they're still they're trying to figure out why that is and we'll talk a little bit later why it's red but pluto's red so we have mars is red and pluto is red so we've got three other objects that are dwarf planets that are out there we do not have very good pictures of them because they are so very very far and we only know they exist because we've seen them in telescopes and we see how things move around them and we know they orbit the Sun but they orbit very very far they're further out than Pluto and those planets are or dwarf planets are Eris, Makemake and Haumea and those are the best pictures we have of all three so we have Eris, Makemake and Haumea and they are so far away that we can't get a very good picture and if we look at the one of Haumea that is not a very good picture at all uh it's just a few pixels so um it's just a few dots on the screen so eventually we want to get out there and take some pictures of them you can see with Eris it has a moon you the little dot right here it's got its own little moon and uh, make make has a moon too but it's further out it's not in the same picture 
So there is a lot of very interesting things really far out in our solar system that we are eventually going to check out um, as human beings. But um, we're going to talk a whole lot more about the planets and the different features of them and what's interesting about them, what we've learned, because we are still learning things about all these planets. Every day we're getting new information from all the probes that we've sent and from astronomers here on Earth looking back at those planets and seeing what are they? What do they do? What's different about this planet? And we're even starting to learn that there's other planets and other stars. So we don't have the only planets here. So it's pretty exciting. And I'm really looking forward to uh, talking more about the solar system with you guys. So um, that's probably what we're going to be doing for the next couple months. Because we've got at least eight planets. And we probably could talk about all eight planets for one month each. But we'll try and speed it up because we don't have that much time. So I'm really excited about that, and I'm looking forward to talking to you guys more about it.